here in autumn we're filming his fossil finds he's got a really nice ammonite there in a limestone rock oh wow look at that don't get much better than that do they oh perfection and great preparation what a lovely impression too the other side let's see it back together little polished pebble Well, I'm here with Mike Harrison, professional fossil collector, and we're talking fossils today with Mike at his pond. Look at that little nodule with all those beautiful ammonites in, Promicrocerus primarily. Such a small nodule, and yet all those finds in that little limestone specimen there. Well, can you tell what fossil Mike has found here in this Stellari nodule? Can you tell what he's found? I'll just wet it to bring up some of the calcite colours. There's quite a few bubbles coming out of that particular marine creature, ancient marine creature. So it must have hollow chambers. It's a rather nice Nautilus he's found in a Stellari nodule, sitting up there on that plinth. Well, you saw me at Mike's Pond back in the summer when I filmed some of his wonderful fossils. And here's an ammonite bed packed full of ammonites, particularly Promicrocerus, all preserved in calcite, a wonderful little fossil bed. Look at that, Mike. That's agatized and silicified fossil wood from the wow. Jurassic Coast monkey puzzle tree. With a little Torito borings in there as well, sort of agatized. You can see the rings in the wood there yeah. as well. Yeah. Amazing. Well, when you're searching the beaches at low tide for the Jurassic fossils, you're not only looking for them, but also to some Cretaceous fossil finds like this superb agatized and silicified fossil wood. It's nicely preserved. Well, here's a very recent little fossil sponge in the Cretaceous rock that I found. So look at this little thin slither, very thin slither of the limestone rock. Looks like a piece of uh, the actual wood stone. Oh, they don't come any better than that. Yeah, though. look, little impression one side, the whole ammonite the other side. Wow. But if you have a look how small that is. So when you're looking for the thin grey layered limestone rocks, look for impressions of ammonites on the outside to give the game away. There might be something more on the inside. And here too is a lovely calcite ammonite inside. You can see the chambers of the creature filled with beautiful crystalline calcite. That was fun to cut and polish myself in the workshop. There's a lovely little ammonite, this ammonite preserved in limestone matrix with the sharp spikes on. Those spines you can see there called Zipherocerus, that ammonite, nicely prepared by Mike Harrison, preserved nicely in calcite. Let's see if you can identify this fossil Mike Harrison has found, one preserved in chert bed. It's a fossil sea urchin, as you can see from the Cretaceous period. Here's a nice fossil Mike's found, quite rough on the other side, but you turn it over where he's done some prep work. What a lovely bit of preservation that ammonite's got on it. Looks like it's from the red band, that particular fossil. Well, here's a little limestone nodule with an ammonite Mike's prepping away at and another rock you can see with an ammonite still protruding out of the rock that he needs to develop do some work on just a small piece of rock not a large piece by any means well look at this fun little nodule that mike's prepared up you can see a good impression that side and a lovely ammonite the other side called Zipherocerus preserved in calcite. What a fun piece of rock. Well, here's Mike Harrison with a beautiful 
ichthyosaur tail preserved in this lias material and you can see those lovely little articulated backbones there and this is a funny story i was out on a fossil walk once and a dutch family in particular walked up to me and dropped a big piece of lias next to me and it had a really good section of ichthyosaur on it and they said oh this isn't anything and they walked off well i had to get them back and and make sure that they knew that it was part of an ichthyosaur so uh that was a strange day on the old fossil walks how did you find that one mike well this one all that was showing was this this little bit on oh, the end wow here. really the worn yeah, edge that's, there that's all that, that was showing and of course i looked on the other end of the block and i couldn't see anything sticking out the other end so i did think it was just that and i got my knife out and started to remove the shale and could feel there was more underneath so i trimmed the block down brought it home and um, prepped it up to find the whole tail wow just a couple of um verts are going to drift there yeah. in the middle for some reason some sort of predation going on showing there as well look so while we're on the subject of ichthyosaur backbones, look at these really gigantic ichthyosaur backbones I found. About three vertebrae there, you can see, almost whole, a bit eroded by the sea. And there are small ichthyosaur backbone in comparison to the really big ones there from the Jurassic Coast. I found those at low tide. Another good fossil find to show you from my collection is a ichthyosaur jaw. You can see how gnarled it is. The sea really eroding that specimen there. The bone has been ground down by the attrition of the sand and sea. Look at the cross section there of that jaw section. You can see the teeth there in it. Well, here are some of the fossil finds that you may find out along the Jurassic coast at low tide, like that ichthyosaur backbone, a pyrite ammonite, and then you can see the ammonites preserved in the beef rock, beef calcite you find on the beaches, a fossil sea lily stem, a coprolite fossil you can see there, and then also to some bone ground down by the attrition of the sand and sea, a bit of ichthyosaur jaw, a fossil oyster shell, a sea urchin, a little sponge, and there's an ammonite in limestone, a piece of fossil wood. All these fossils you might be able to find if you obey the fossil collecting code of conduct when you come down along the Jurassic coast at low tide looking for the fossils washed out of the mudslides onto the beaches by the sea's actions. It's a really good fun thing to do. You can see the fossil collecting code of conduct online 